Here we go, Antigua Shipyard. We have to the top of the map in the red color our player for FXO. FXO lucky. He really needs to be a little bit lucky here because he does not only need to win this game, at the same time he needs to hope that Virus is taking down for GG and the TVT. His opponent starting at the bottom of the map, at the bottom of Antigua Shipyard in the blue color. Slayer Brown. A player that has no chance of advancing whatsoever. Yep. He still has to play though. Hopefully he won't pull uh You know, Slayer's Brown does this weird thing. Have you noticed this when he plays? He squints his eyes a little bit as yeah. if he's like really focused. I kinda I think that looks cool. It's like he's trying to assess like something that we can't even think about or something. He's like, is that pylon place right? And he like checks really closely, he's like, Yeah, okay. He's a close call. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's really interesting when I see him do that. He just seems so focused. Yeah, he is really, really focused and he is concentrating so much. And it actually kind of shows already that he is taking this very serious. Which is, in my opinion, really important because at this point he could just play like really relaxed, like, yeah, well, I don't care. He's gonna go Nexus first, but he's gonna get denied. So, Forge has to be tossed. He's opting to wall, by the way, at his Nexus rather than at his ramp, which there's always been uh, some debate about that on this map. Yeah, huge debate. Not only here, on uh, Bellship Beach we have the same yeah, situation. Exactly. In the end it comes down to a matter of preference. You know, I, I think it's easier to learn how to wall at the ramp, but I think it may be better, in my opinion, it may be better to wall at the Nexus. You're just not that much... Well, the huge problem if you wall at the ramp is if your opponent goes for a gamble and starts at the very early pool, then you suddenly are in a position where you can't defend it. Yeah. So you have kind of an auto loss. There's, it's very, very hard to uh, get into a defensive position. You need to build the pylon in the main base, you need to build the cannon, but you will already be behind. You need to make sure that you don't lose too many probes, then you can still take the game. But if you wall at the bottom, then you're usually in a position where you can still hold. Especially, you might have to pull a couple of probes in order to defend, uh, to block the, the ramp. But that's basically all that you need to do. By the way, the pylon blocks the main hatchery, but Lucky goes for his third base instead. He's already planned on going for a fast third either way, so as soon as his pylon dies, he will be able to make it. So a good block attempt by Brown, but he is not. So double gas going down. And things looking pretty standard, pretty normal here. Neither player taking a lead. Pylon will fall. Pylon will fall, and we have the second, well, basically the third base now for Lucky. So, kind of a standard game on Antigua, exactly what we are used to see on this map. Here's the Protoss and the PvP, uh, sorry, PvZ, PvZ and ZVP win race for the two players, 71%. Lucky is just a beast in this matchup, and hmm, apparently we have Brown with a very stellar record against Zerg as well. So, let's see what he's going to do in order to. Um, take down the third of his opponent. The one thing that I really like that we don't see on uh, this particular map, this, this matchup now, but lately a lot of Protoss players try to be a little bit more aggressive in the early game, starting with the gate once again before into expansion, and we see them trying to take a third base instead of attack going for a two base all in in order to uh, take down this uh, Zerg's third base, which is uh, really interesting and just shows that all these matchups are still evolving quite a bit. Yeah, I, I, I really think that it's better to do the attack right now. I think that's still much more figured out. The Zergling is checking for that third base right now, just making sure absolutely, without a doubt, that Brown isn't going to do anything crazy like that. Uh, six more drones being added for Lucky, and right now, he still has no gases. He is droning like a madman. There's the first gas, and he'll be taking a second one as well, yep, in his main base. And no gases for Brown just yet, nor has he added any gateways. I think he'll probably add three gates and put on some pressure if he doesn't add the gases right now. And here he goes now adding the gates. Adding them at his natural, a much less predictable location because the Overlord will only be checking the gases but will not be actually flying into the natural. So this is really cool. Lucky's gonna try to fly his Overlord into the main to check for those gates. They won't be there. Oh, actually I take it back. There will be some gates in there because he's actually gonna be going for a six gate, seven gate. Eight gate? Eight gate? <laughs> ah! On how many? So we did Two gases, probes. 34 probes. Super all in. 
At this point, we have uh, we have the usual timings for Lucky. At exactly the seven-minute mark, he drops down uh, the Roach Warren. At 7.20 to 7.30, he follows with the Evolution Chamber. Those are exactly the uh, timings that we are used to by uh, Zerk lately. Oh, I wish he made three gates in the main and four at the natural, because then it would not be scouted. But now, Lucky sees four additional gateways and will be able to adequately defend. He started Roach production already. He may not be able to hold this even still, though. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tough. He's going for the Ling speed now, and then scouts the pylon, so he knows that there's an all-in coming. Oh, he may not be able to save the probe. The probe's going to try to make another pylon, but there's creep in the way. The probe, it's he does survive. save it. The probe is going to survive. He tries to delay it a little bit longer, but the second pylon will be placed, and now the Overlord is headed towards the bottom right, and there he will spot the additional gates. Will he be able to defend this? There are not enough units yet, I don't think. More Stalkers rallying in here. If he engages these Roaches now, he should be able to get the lead he needs to actually kill Lucky here. 20 additional Zerglings will stream in. He needs to make sure that he misses not a single inject now. Those Lava are so precious. They are like gold. He needs to save these Lava. If he oh, loses, he loses another Overlord. I don't really think it matters all that much, the Overlord. Ah, uh, well, still, he is, will be supplied in a second. You're right. Yeah, this is really not good. He cannot afford to make another Overlord right now. The Roach is being cornered here. The Stalkers, though, not supported. Now they are by the Zealots, and Lucky, I think, is going to die, Kaldor. Yeah, I think so, too. He, he absolutely will die. He attacks Zealots with plus one Zealots with Zerglings. This is not something you should do, and there are too many GG. Stalkers. GG! Brown takes the game and ties with Lucky. Lucky is on 2-3, Brown is on 2-3. Both of them are out. They don't have a chance of winning one of the two code escorts and it will all come down to for GG against a virus. Oh my god, I, I don't want to be Huck right now. I don't either, man. Huck will sit in the backstage area, he will sit there, he will watch the game and he will cheer for the OGS player, he will cheer for 4 GG and oh my god, Brown is so disappointed. He's like, oh, why did I not just win one more game? One more game and I would have been uh, in a position where I could have gotten to the shot at Kodas. Yo, man. Lucky getting a chat with Shoya here. Well, people just telling me on uh, Twitter that Lucky and Brown does matter. And, uh, well, guys, you did not pay attention to what we uh, said because we stated exactly the same. We said that it does matter, but only if 4GG loses his match, so it does not matter if 4GG wins and therefore we could have swapped the match order and potentially saved a game, but I'm actually quite happy that we did not. Well, well was that a was a pretty game. exciting match to watch regardless, uh, to see a very unique 8-gate timing attack. Yeah. The, the thing that I just love about these games is not about the single game, but it's about the whole situation which adds extra excitement. So, yeah, but still, to all those people out there, we you actually did not pay attention. You should always pay attention when Wolf <laughs> and I talk because we have actually some very interesting we things have stuff to, say. to say, guys. Yeah, something sometimes we do. What do you mean sometimes? Always, actually. Give yourself more credit, Calder. Yeah, Pascal saving a lot of stuff that is really important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but well, the most important thing right now is the next game, and this is going to be so crazy. So, once again, if 4GG wins, he will be on a 4-1 to one score. He will advance as number one in the group. Then suddenly we would have the situation that um, Huck would be tied with... Nobody. With nobody. And therefore would advance. Yep. In case that 4GG loses his game, 4GG, Huck and Virus would be tied. And because Huck lost to 4GG and to Virus, um, uh, both Terran players would advance. Yep. So there's, this is our final game regardless. There will be no tiebreakers. And there could have been, depending on how other things had gone earlier, but it's not going to be the case. And so, if you're a Hulk fan, you really need to be cheering for 4GG here. Yep. And if you're a Terran fan, you want more Terrans than GSL, you want Virus in, be cheering for Virus here because we we'll make two Terrans advance uh, with no Hulk. So this is a really, really important match, and Virus's TVT is his worst matchup by far, and in fact has shown really bad games. If I'm not mistaken, I think he even has a less than 30% win rate in TVT or something abhorrent like that. This is a best of one, and guys, there is so much pressure for the two of them now. Yeah. The thing for, for Gigi is he does not have to win. Yeah. As far as I know, that's, that's true. 
Yeah, because the only person he would tie to he's already beaten, so yeah. he does not have to win. So for Finn, though, uh, to play against Virus, I think he's going to play really well. I don't expect... Uh, Actually, it made uh, it kind of made sense to play Slayer's Brown against Lucky. Yeah. Because in case that Lucky would have won, there would have been a lot more pressure for Finn. Yeah. That's that's actually a well, good point. in the end, either way. Yeah. Well, whatever. That was the order that it was set. <laughs> yeah, that was so. a set order. So, <laughs> so the players can prepare. We're like overthinking this now. Yeah, we're kind of. We're like, well, maybe we should switch the booths around, but... <laughs> Um, well, it looks like Finn's now in the lobby. He had to set up some stuff, but he's ready. And I, I'm really excited about this match because even though it doesn't matter about Finn, this is so epic for Virus. Like, what will these two players do? Virus, he may try to play straight up against Finn, thinking that Finn may not play as his best, may not play as seriously. Or Virus could go for a cheese. It's hard to say what he's going to do, but it, this is his worst matchup by far. He's well known for being terrible. Actually, in thinking about it, it would have ma uh, made sense. Uh, I might be digging my own grave here, but it would have made sense to switch the uh, game order because now 4GG knows that he does not have to win. If he would have played Slayer's Crown against Lucky after this game, he would have still been in a position where he was like, okay, I don't know if Lucky wins or not, so I have to give my best because if Lucky takes the game and I lose, then I'm in a really bad spot. Anyways, guys, whatever. This is just a little bit of speculation. And with this last uh, assumption, I might actually be a little bit wrong because I don't know about exactly all of the ties that we would have. In this particular situation, we are very sure that Huck needs to rely on 4GG taking the game. 4GG against Virus will be the last game of the day. And Terran versus Terran. If Virus wins, two Terran players will advance if he loses.